first home, they always tell you, get into home inspection, be sure, be safe. So that's what we did. Don't you think we need someone to say, hey, it's gonna be cold? Holy cow, that freaked me out. This is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. It should never be that easy. As first time home buyers, we didn't know. You put your trust in these people. Nothing in the report that says you should address this. I could have done a better job myself. All right, let's take it down. I'm here for Nancy and Simon. They're newlyweds. This is their very first home. The inspection wasn't terrible. You did find some things, and the homeowners did the right thing. They started to work on and fix the things that were in the report. Two thumbs up. However, things started to go wrong. Things just weren't quite right. Why am I here? I'm here to ask questions, get answers. I'm here to do a homes inspection, and I'm going to make it right. We looked at a lot of houses, and we basically spent Saturday and Sunday, Saturday and Sunday for three or four months looking at houses, viewing homes. And uh, this one here came up and uh, we did the open house. As soon as I walked in the front door, I thought I, the layout was just perfect. The windows were open and all the light was coming in and then I, I kept walking and I saw the large backyard and the deck that was out there and I thought, okay, this is great. And as long as she was happy, I was happy. First home, they always tell you, get into home inspection, be sure, be safe. So that's what we did. When the inspector came, we were both present. Mm -hmm. He did his thing, he walked around, and when the report was all wrapped up, he kind of walked me through the points that he had made in the inspection. So I thought everything was good to go. Oh, a nice little dog. Hi, killer. How you doing? <laughs> okay, you must be Simon. Simon. Nice to meet you. And you must be Nancy. Hi, nice I'm Mike. to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. I think being the first home that you go and buy, it makes it a little difficult because you don't know exactly what to look for, right? But once you settle into the home, you start to realize, well, how come this is the way it is? And, and is this correct or is it not? Right. And then you actually start to realize, well, how come the inspector when we bought this house never made a point of putting that in front of us? I think that he should have been able to find these problems that are now come up. He clearly missed them. So this is the great deck that we have that uh, we actually didn't set foot on until we uh, were kind of settled in. And uh, as you can see, if you were to have a glass, of, sorry, if you were to have a glass <laughs> on there, you'd, you'd end up rolling down with it. Yeah. Oh, there wasn't much about that in the report. There was actually nothing in the report That's what about I'm that. talking about. The whole thing is dropped. I mean, look how drunk this thing is. It's right down. You can yeah. see it right on the rails compared to the fence, and the yeah. fence is running yeah. down. Yeah. But whoever built this, all they did was dug a hole, put a vertical four by four in the ground, no concrete, no nothing, and all. And just over time, it's going to sink down because nothing's holding those posts. This is sunk so low that this third step is in the ground. This used to be up high enough that there was a riser just like this here. That's how far it sunk down. They built on the back side of this, added another two by two with the clamp on the wall to help hold it. This at one time, here was the end that touched the brick. That's how far just in this short span, okay, and it's only three feet that that has moved out. That means it's moved out a lot to have a difference of about two and a half inches. And the drop is at least eight inches. Man, that is just a crappy deck, isn't it? Uh, now, it's a sound wall. I guess you know that, eh? Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. That product is supposed to help uh, with sound suppression. And but... it actually does. We're in the backyard and uh, the rain's coming down. We noticed that a lot of the dirt that is up on this hill keeps sliding down. Eventually the lost soil coming down in that big wall we have in the backyard could, could come down. There is issues. What do we see wrong with the concrete? Any time you're gonna have that concrete do this at the top, the frost will grab it, lift the posts out of the ground and damage it big time. I think the only reason it hasn't moved is because it's deep enough. So this could become a big issue. We can easily fix it by chipping that away and stop that cove from coming up. And if anything, I want to see it cove at the bottom, right. right? So it can't lift it up. It is beautiful. There's things that we can do. Let me see how I can stop that washing back in. 
this is actually where on the interior of the house where we have the crack showing. And you're leaking? And we are we are showing water. Yes. yes. The first bell that went off was I found water in the basement mm -hmm. at the area where the inspector had told me the foundation was repaired. And uh, that was the first trigger point to say, well, this this is huge. This this is something that would have made or break the deal at the time of buying the house if I had known that this is gonna be a fault today. Cracks don't bother me. It's whether or not you know, they're Water leaking. Penetrates. Okay, so what do we see? I see some sort of rubber system. Somebody's that tried to repair, repair it. Right. Yeah. That's right. And they just did a simple roof patch pair, and that's not going to work. So we have a foundation problem. How many times do I got to see this? Now we have a drip line. What's this drip line? It's not connected on the inside of the house either. That's a drip line. Maybe they ran something. I'm thinking of the old homeowner. Maybe they ran something, a water hose. But we do have a problem with the plumbing. We can even see the oxidi oxidization, the green on the copper. And that's simply because there's a break inside the wall from freezing, and there's a hole in the pipe. You know, we have better taps on the market. I'm going to make sure we put in a new one. They won't freeze. I see you've done some things, eh? I've done my best. What'd you do in the kitchen? So um, we started off, we basically thought we were going to live with the kitchen, but we didn't. And uh, we gutted it. We took out um, all the cabinets, put new floors in, new appliances. So I don't have to look in this sink for plumbing? I don't, I'm confident this sink is good. OK, I'll check it later. OK. I'll check it later. <laughs> the basement's a great room, and, and we set it up initially for entertaining and having friends down there. And, and then winter came, and. I wasn't going down there. It was freezing, so it doesn't get used. We're cold. Why are we cold? You got a new furnace. Yes. We did. So that's not the reason why this room was cold. We put a new furnace in because the one that was here was original, and uh, we wanted the high efficiency to capture the benefits of it. Don't you think we need someone to say, hey, there's no heat registers in here. It's going to be cold in the winter because you got no heat running in here. It's going to be cold. So should not have missed that. I thought it was just a matter of opening the vents up. So. I went down trying to find vents, and there's nothing down there. You're walking around, you say, well, what the heck? How come we don't have vents down here to heat the basement? This can't be right. We didn't know what to expect with a home inspector. We don't know what he's supposed to look for. We, you put your trust in these people to get the, the, the job done. If anything, it hindered us because we spent money in a different area of the home, which was not a necessity, whereas today, this is a necessary fix that has to happen. We're going to go through it. I'm going to find out what needs to be done. We're probably going to make a bit of a mess, so I'm going to say sorry now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't like the, that it's not in the report. It's wrong. We need to make it right. Man, that is just a crappy deck, isn't it? If the inspection would have cost me triple the amount of money to, to be 100% certain that he is going to find issues that exist in the home, um, I would have paid it. Kind of drives me insane. This uh, home inspector has missed so many things. It doesn't take me long to walk around and see a few things like, look, these straps are terrible. They need to be replaced. There's damages, holes, it's everywhere. It's all the way around the house. I can see it everywhere. Mine are here. Truth is, it's outdated. It's got to be all replaced, and that's not in the report. That figures. I mean, how many times do I got to see this? It's a minor crack here. You know, it's not major. Remember, this is a cladding. It's not a structure. It's just a, a siding. It's a finish on your home. As simple as getting a caulking mortar. Then just caulk it in there. It looks really good. It looks like a mortar, and it solves the problem. Is it really an issue? The answer is no. But I'm going to document it. The brick is great. This is what we call a drip brick, so we have a bit of a drip off the brick. But look at the raking. I really like this. This is the raking, the mortar that's in between the brick. Now, if you notice, it's almost like a trial had gone up on this angle and come across, creating a perfect rake. As rain or snow comes onto this brick, it'll hit this and run off the brick. So it's not going to sit and be absorbed right into the brick as fast as it can absorb. Whoever did the brick work did it very well. This is where we have a join in the sill. And I wish it was one full piece, but the mortar has already cracked and fallen out of here. And you think of the rain, man. That rain is going to get right in there. Now, where does it go? It's going to, yes, get in behind the brick. Does it get inside, into, inside the house? The truth is, yes. Number one entrance points for water in your home is your windows, your doors, the chimney to your roof. Simple. 
pay attention to these areas. A little bit of caulking here is gonna save a fortune of money in the future of possible mold growth. These rails gotta come off. This is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. You call that safe? Can you imagine? Your friends, family get hurt because the railing's no good. You know how easy I can break this? I'm not gonna do it right now. Let's keep it there just in case until I fix it. God, my, my booty's on. You know what, they're so clean, man. I'm gonna make sure I keep this place clean. I don't wanna leave a dirt trail because I've been here. Now, he's not here, so I thought I'd check his plumbing. Just to see whether or not he's done a good job. Well, he wants to glue everything, doesn't he? He's actually glued his compression fitting, so that means you can't take it off again. He's even glued his <sighs> clean out. Well, it's not gonna leak, I can tell you that much, but you never get your diamond earring out of there in case it falls in the sink. Oh, you know what? I'm just gonna help him out here. I'm just gonna pull this up just a bit, give him a downhill run, tighten this up for him, you know. All right. the little things that he did. This is a no-no, you know, if I think he knows. And the truth is, he said to me, he says, I didn't want to spend more money and buy a GFI. I bought a cheap route. I go, because you tried to save money? Your hands are in the sink? You're near a plug? So, you know, if you want to save money that bad, it could kill you. Honestly, why risk it? You know, for any electrical or plumbing work, make sure you bring in a pro, get a permit, and do it right the first time. I just want to see your work, dear pal. <laughs> He likes glue. That's an awful lot of glue. I didn't chintz out on that. And we have all kinds of signs of the water coming in. Somebody has also done an interior parge on the inside, trying to solve it from the inside. Here's our crack that we saw outside, and that crack goes right down to the bottom, right to here. This is a minor crack. It's very thin. What I care about is if it's leaking through the crack. And it's leaking. So what does that mean? It means we got to dig down to the pudding. This is where we get into the nitty gritty stuff. OK. Definite, definite signs of water. We definitely have mold on it. But this has been leaking for a while. So that means the foundation right there is dripping across the floor. And where's that drain that somebody's closed off? I'll find it. And I'll fix it. Let's start out on the deck. We'll sit down and chat about what we're going to do. Nice. That's a good start. Yeah, you'll see. <laughs> Take a look at this. Oh, I can see it from here. Oh, 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 oh man. A little sinking, eh? Yeah. Look at the rails here. Oh, my god. Let me guess. No concrete on the posts? Can you believe this? Nothing in the report that says you should address this. This it, is an issue. Did he talk about this at all, the deck? No. Nothing about the deck? No, nothing about the deck. What well, looks like it's missing? What looks like it's missing? Ah, there's no heat. They move in, and they say they're freezing in the winter. No registers. Not in the oh, report. Not in the report. There's no drain in the floor. And what really drives me insane is the, well, let's step into the room here. I'll show you. Is there or is it buried, Mike? Well, I think it's buried. And the other side of the furnace is a little pump. Yeah. So that there's no drain, the furnace guys are going to bring right. the pump, and they're going to run it through, and they actually tied it into the bar sink. OK, here's what the furnace guys did. That's the line that I saw. The pump's right there, I don't know, two feet away from my flashlight. So they make the pump pump into, this is a standard tailpiece that's for uh, under a sink that you can put your dishwasher into. Now, I'm not saying that this doesn't work. What I am saying, this isn't really the way you should do this. If this sink ever backs up, that water will find its way back to the condensate pump, and it will actually flood in the basement, just like the walls flooding. And these are things we're trying to stop. We're going to get rid of the pump, run an underground condensate line directly to the floor drain. Let's protect the booze, take this, all that, put it in my truck. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I know. I got to get rid of some of this stuff. We're never going to work. Ah, there wasn't much about that in the report. There was actually nothing in the report. That's what about I'm that. talking about. 
We need to take our time. Find the right home inspector. Hey, George, how long have you been in the business? What do you specialize in? What did you do before you were a home inspector? Hey, since we have everyone together, uh, why don't we start? Mike, Sherry, you can be downstairs with me. We'll pull out the tiles. You guys step outside, start clearing the deck, actually start taking apart, see what you can find. And sure. Just, there's enough of us here. Let's just go at her. Guys, ready? Let's go. Yeah. Sherry, Sherry, <laughs> this ceiling. Unless you're on a ladder, we'll get these, OK? Uh, that made me tall specifically for these kind of jobs. Yes. This is why we don't do pickets on the outside of the railing, boys. No, it should never be that easy. What we have is our 4x4 post sitting in a fence saddle. It is a saddle that sits onto a spike, so you can actually plant that into the ground and sit your 4x4 post on it. It's meant for small areas. It's not meant to hold up a deck. I see the problem with the deck is all right here. Too many of these on building day. Dad, I found a hidden uh, air return here. Well, that's what I was looking for, right? Yeah. We closed off the register. We can see it clearly. Don't you think that should be blowing air down here? I would think so, yeah. They were talking about how cold it was in the basement. That's probably what. That means we're going to have another one. So we follow the ductwork. We see the other one that's here. So whoever put the ceiling in, and how foolish are you? Right? So it keeps the floor nice and warm for upstairs, but no right. heat in the basement. Kind of foolish, isn't it? Mr. Holmes? I'm gone for 20 minutes. <laughs> Why didn't they just put it on blocks, you know? Just put it on a that's, pad, put uh, it on a block. Well, that's the whole point about those spikes that they use. I mean, that's going to just drive it in. No hangers on the back. It's all rotting out, the wrong nails. Plus, we've ripped half of this apart. So, new deck? Absolutely. We could do something nice here. All right, let's take it down. Hey, Lori, thank you so much for coming. Now, I want you here more than anything, is how can we dress this up? How can we create water retention? You can see that area right there. We have a lot of bleed through. So what do you what do you think? I mean, I like the stone. Do you uh, want to build a pressure-treated retaining wall system and tear it to help retain it? I love the rock. The rock is beautiful. But instead of using it as a wall, use it as an accent piece in the garden. If you're going to try and retain the soil, you want a plant that will um, spread its roots through the soil to help hold it in. I recommend sumac across the whole back of the hill. They have sumac back there. Mind you, there's not enough sumac. It should be planted all the way across the back of the wall. Do they have any allergies, though? Because it is one of the highest on the allergy table for people who do have allergies. Sumac ah. is the worst for that. Good point. Why don't we talk to the homeowners about that? And I know you guys are the best at this. I'll leave it up to you? Yeah, we'll sketch up a design and have it to you shortly. Thank you. There's not enough insulation. And he should have got that right away. This caught me here. A little bit of mold we have on the board here. We've had condensation build up. You can see just little marks like this right here. Here's probably the issue. We have so much heat loss coming up through because we have insufficient insulation. The heat's coming up, mixing with the cool air, creating that condensation. Like, look at this corner here. Minor mold. Some more insulation here should help fix it. And I'll have Alex ensure we have enough venting. Get stuff. Yvonne or Sherry, can you start peeling that back as I go? What I'm looking for is the old drain. I just want to see where they would have had it before. Just peel it back, guys. I don't want you to move it too much. It, it is a little moldy. We found a drain. You found a drain, and it's there. OK, I thought it was further down this way, but it's actually right here. So Martin has a place he can start scoping. And I want to know if that drain is functioning, if it's collapsed. It actually has a primer line in it, and it's yeah. still got water in it, which is great. This is a functioning floor drain. It makes no sense to do another one. So let's just it looks in a good shape, it. as the video camera indicated. Good news, buddy. All right. I'm happy. Gare, gare, gare. What did you find, bud? 
Minor things, buddy. Right off the bat, this uh, return air. Yeah? It's in the what furnace room. Oh, yeah, good point. Is that return there? Yep. We're gonna relocate this return air that's in the furnace room, and we're gonna pipe it out to the main room. Drawing more air from that main room is gonna allow more air to be distributed throughout the rest of the house. I got that. A couple runs inside the uh, basement room here. Right, we just want to bring them down to ceiling height because we're going to keep the same height there, Gare. Okay. Well, they have a condensate pump on this job. The problem is with the condensate pump is they've ran the line over to the bar sink. Um, if this bar sink ever backs up, that, that water is going to feed back into the condensate pump and you're going to have a flood in the basement. We're gonna disconnect our condensate line that's running to our bar sink, and we're gonna install a new three-quarter inch pipe and run it into our floor drain. Hey, Garrett, can I help, buddy? That's it, buddy. I know, that's why I came. <laughs> it looks really good, man. That's what we want, right? And so we got the condensate pump line out of the bar sink, out of the trap there, and brought it into the ground, which is exactly what we wanted to do here. I have a challenge for you. I want you to design this. I want you to draw it out. Yep. Don't just do a rectangular landscaping deck. Simple, spectacular. OK. I like a challenge. Well, what do you think? What do you think? Well, that's not bad. I think the homeowners are going to love us. There's definitely water coming into the basement. You know, it kind of looks like somebody's tried to fix it already. Something tells me that whoever tried to fix this dug down a little bit, put a little bit of black stuff on the wall and thinks that's going to fix it. Yeah. They it's not going to fix it. A little it. bit of foundation coating. And what they actually did was to protect their work was they put a board up against it. And you can see where that board is now separated from the house. So there's just a huge cavity there to let the water flow right in. Well, what they've tried to do here is uh, they've just coated the inside of this crack with a, a light masonry coating. That will never stop water penetration. As we go through the freeze and thaw cycle, if you try to seal this from the inside, water's still gonna get through this crack from the exterior. When the water freezes, it's gonna expand and it's gonna pop that crack open a very little bit every season. So what they've tried here is definitely not gonna work. Typically, when we come across a single crack in a poured concrete foundation, what we do is we go three feet either side of the crack, right down to the footing, and we seal the whole area. Just the bottom now. The reason we're taking out this part of the fence, a lot of it was built improperly. We had a gate that was improperly built. We had a fence that was falling apart. The posts aren't even concreted in. That's the main reason we're taking it out. The second reason being we need to get machines in here to do the amount of work that we have to do. We're now doing a landscaping deck. Can't do a lot of that without a machine. It's got to come out. Come here, guys. I want to show you what we're doing. I want to map this out so it's perfectly square. So let's start by getting a tape measure. I want someone at the wall. We're going to hold out the tape measure, and we're going to level down. That's going to be our first marker, OK, guys? Right there, OK? Put that right there, MJ. Right about there. Let's just string this right down here, guys, and then we'll work on the other section after that. We want to get our first straight line, OK? So Joe, I'm having a square patio here with a half round out the front. Now I have two pillars with lights on top. Uh, illuminating this whole patio. So I need some conduit run out. I just need to know if we actually 
have room in the panel. We do have room in the panel. You do? Uh, okay. We're going to need a trench from there to the first light. Yep. And then another trench over to and the... And you're going to branch off of that one, right? Yeah, okay. from there. And I need a minimum of 18 inches. Right. Okay. Below grade. Uh, if you want to spray paint that, I'll get the guys with shovels digging okay. down. Ah, <laughs> uh, clay's pretty heavy. <laughs> I don't really like digging it out. <laughs> yeah, break another one to take some shovels. This is called an expansion joint. In the winter, you get the frost up and down movement. And what this does is, with that frost, it gives you that play up and down. As the frost lifts, it's not gonna rip the pipe and it's not gonna put pressure on the wire. This here will take that up and down movement and uh, it's, it'll just save everything in the long run. Now that Joey's finished burying the electrical, we can actually start on this deck. Now, Teo is laying down a geotextile fabric that will act as a barrier between the ground and the crusher run. The geotextile will allow the water to drain, but prevent the migration of the crusher into the ground, which is providing the base to this patio. It'll also keep weeds from going through the cracks. Steven, so this is our issue. This is the first thing Mike and I both noticed was the rust on the trough, and I know that's got to be replaced right away, including some downspouts, but was there any other issues on the house? The rest of it looks fairly good. It's not that old of a house. Yeah. Um, it looks like it's been, you know, fairly well maintained. Really, all we have to do is replace the eaves trough with some new aluminum. That's good news. It's just trough and uh, downspout at this point. Put it down. You're good, right about there. Okay, so what I want right now is I want to pin this. I want to draw half inch holes and we're gonna pound rebar straight through both of these. Right now we're just we're getting into the corners and to tie the corners all in we, we bring them back farther into the ground drive them back and we're going to rebar those in place which is going to also help the wall from pushing forward against the uh, with the weight of the soil. Sherry this is a two man. Okay we've already measured this is our first hole right here. So Sherry you got to hold on tight. Okay if that catches you gotta be strong. Yep. All you're doing is holding it, Cherry. We're using one person laying stone. Uh, the reason for that is it's a random pattern, but each person has their own random pattern. So if two people start on this, the patterns are gonna look off. You have one person laying the pattern, 
it stays consistent throughout the whole field. It looks much, much better. Ooh. You can see it's turned into a little bit of a bomb shelter out there. Just don't, like, step out here right now. Yeah, okay. of course. <laughs> Holy cow, that freaked me out. You really like ABS glue, don't you? <laughs> you had to see Martin when he opened up the cover. He goes, oh, my. He was actually red, and he's laughing. I said, I know he likes ABS glue. This is overwhelming. Well, actually, uh, <laughs> I like that you try yourself, Simon, but next time, get a pro. Do it right. Alex, hey, Mike. what do you see? Well, I see a bunch of insulation up there. Mm, not enough. Not enough, and uh, probably not enough ventilation. A little bit of mold. You're always going to have a little bit of heat escaping through the insulation. With that heat goes the moisture, right? A little bit of moisture in the attic. Ventilation should pick that up and get rid of it. It's not happening, so you know what? We're going to fix it. So what we're going to have doing is we're going to rake the insulation back, get the vents in, stuff it, and then blow the cellulose over top of the fiberglass. Although I'm not a big fiberglass fan, it's still a good product. You don't want to fill it, put it to the landfill. Well, that, that makes sense to me. All right, I'm fine with that. Thanks, man. Garbage. You see the actual break on it? You know, this thing's been abused in so many places. Oh, oh there's the hole. hole. So depending on when that leak happened, this could have been leaking like for 10 years against that foundation. Yeah. yeah. But you can see that the material has been abused almost. Like it's been it's been pushed really hard through the wall and you know, all those bents and uh, and deformations and copper obviously didn't help, yeah. right? So they hammered it in. This and... this is not how you actually install a hose bit. Typically, we put a, uh, either three inch, four inch, or six inch drainage tile behind a retaining wall. Then we put gravel. Gravel. And we're trucking all that gravel in, as well as putting textile over it again. So now we have it in one system. It's 100% recycled material. When buried, it will withstand light traffic. Right. So you can drive over it. And you put this in no gravel, no geotextile, exactly. no nothing. Well, it just takes some of the labor out of the labor intensive job. And this will last a long, long time. So roughly done about four skids. So I'm looking at close to thousand plus stones I've moved probably about 10,000 pounds plus stones I've moved. Back's a little sore, legs are a little sore. Nothing like a good work. lift this rock. Just I gotta get it out of the way. I gotta till this area here. Let's just try. If we can't do it, we can't do it. Oh, oh yeah. There we go. That's it. You got it? Yeah. Whew. One more. They will not beat us. One, two, three guys, go. I gotta get two big strong lads and they just have to toss them in and how they land is how they stay. 
called one man stones for a reason. Tip for the one man stones. <laughs> Better not drop this. Okay, go. <laughs> Almost lost it. These are Japanese dappled willows, and uh, they'll fill in really nice and create a nice big bush right here and look as if it's one huge bush eventually. Well, what we're using here are, uh, these are weatherproof moret. It's filled with a, uh, a silicone. You can see here that it has come out. It'll prevent moisture from uh, getting in contact with the uh, wires in here and stopping it from uh, corroding. Joey, what do you think of the lights, man? They're awesome. They're, They're great. Bad, eh? Yeah, lights here, the light that you picked on the wall, everything matches. I just got the bulb, the cap on, and we're done. Now that we're almost done the exterior, we have to get started on the finishing touches in the basement. So today, we're painting the walls above some wood wainscoting, and there's uh, trim pieces all around. So what we did is taped it off, and I'm using a quick cut roller, which is actually making my job a lot easier. It's going right against the wood trim. I probably didn't even need to tape it, but as you can see, that leaves me a, a nice, even amount of paint, so I can just take my big roller now and fill in the areas. So it's, it's going really quickly. Damon picked the color. <laughs> I heard what you said, buddy. What's wrong with the color? <laughs> oh my God. What's a little different, eh? It's beautiful. It's huge. You've got great taste. Yeah. This is insane. We don't really know what's gonna happen, but we have some idea that... We have an idea, we have an idea that gonna, there will be something back there. And I'm glad my, someone's gonna be doing the greenery because I definitely do not have a green thumb Both to us. take care of the back. No. Hey, guys. Hi. Hey, Nancy. Hi. Nice to see you nice again. Simon, you. Hey, Mike, I heard you were playing Damon. golf today. I got Why? lucky. I did play golf today. You got did you? Play yeah. golf he golfed we were and I worked. Wedding. It wasn't a great game, though. So then you worry. worked. Of course I worked. Let's talk about your house, since it is your house and we're done and we're giving it back. Absolutely. If you notice, you have all brand new east troughs and downspouts, which I like a lot. Yeah. Steve put in the smart screen, and I really like it, because you have a lot of trees around. No you don't way. have to clean it anymore. It controls the rain and helps avoid ice damming. So I love that. I just like the part I don't have to clean it. And no cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. another win, right? Now you're getting more time for golf. Yeah, more time in true. the man cave. <laughs> After you. Oh, all right. After thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks. Then I'll take you out back. <laughs> you might not like it. I don't know. So let's take a look at the laundry room. Yes. The little things. We fixed the plumbing under the sink. We actually removed that receptacle and put it on this wall over here so you still have one. Thanks, man. That was just too close. The bros put in a beautiful brand new lint trap, and I love those things. If you notice, there's no screws in the pipe, nothing to actually grab the lint to create a lint blockage, and you have a lint trap, so yes. that really helps. Yeah. As we turn around, you're gonna see new floor. Yeah. Uh, supply by the homeowners, so that was you guys. So you, <laughs> you did go out and purchase a laminate flooring, right? We did, yes. but it, it definitely saves me a lot of time that it's already on the floor now. Well, you can golf more. That's just true. <laughs> I'm gonna ride you more about this, Frank, because I'm jealous I haven't golfed since last year. <laughs> you walk over this way, you're gonna find the magical drain that we, none of us could find. Since we found it, we're gonna make it, we're gonna show it. We don't wanna cover it up with the floor. Sure. We tapped in a line from the furnace and brought it right into here. So, so no more water pump now. No more That's water fantastic. pump. That's right. Now, all of a sudden, we look up. Fence. Hey, new ceiling. Look at that. Oh, well, you know what? We actually <laughs> kept all your grid, and we give you all new tiles. But there was vents up there. All we did was extend them down. So some yo-yo back a long time ago did the work here, put up the ceiling, and thought, no, oh, it'll still heat the place. <laughs> Unreal. The guys in the attic made sure we had proper ventilation and added 24 more inches of insulation up there. R50, above code. Fantastic. I like to be above code. 
just dressed it up with a little bit of paint. I guess you can see the paint. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Looks much cleaner yeah. now. And Craig teased me about the paint color. Don't kill me about the paint color. I was just looking to spice it up a no, little well, bit. Well, that's us. No, Do you like great. the paint color? Yeah, absolutely. There you go. Craig, what does he know, right? Yeah, well, he's, <laughs> it's not quite yellow. It's it's almost got a tan it's in it. It's like so. a banana. And banana no, nice. goes with the drinks. No I didn't take you for that kind of a alcohol drinker. Well, if I'm in the Caribbean, come on. <laughs> now, let's move to the back where the inspector missed all kinds of things. All right. Awesome. Ready? Yeah, Thanks. absolutely. OK, come on up. No more just step. gorgeous. And we should get a patio and chair you notice here. you look down, it just grades right to the center, runs all the water from the back directly out. Now, you remember the hole that was here. Yeah, huge. Yes. I do. Massive yeah, hole. Yeah. I remember. It was rather deep, wasn't it? Yeah. It's, it's all fixed. It's completely sealed from the uh, outside, which is the side I want to fix it by, not the inside. And something I noticed, somebody cocked all the sills. I took your advice. OK, let me show you something. Come on over here. So this is your caulking. Yes. And this is our caulking. Well, you did it's the whole clear. thing. Yes. Mm. Now, which one looks better? Yours. Yours. OK, did we teach you something new? Yes. Sorry, Sai. Use clear, <laughs> clear caulking. Thanks, Sorry, buddy. Si. Well, it stands out. The good thing is you did something about it and stopped the water from coming in. Two thumbs up on that one. So turn around, and I'll open the gate. Okay. You ready? Oh, it's horrible. Oh, wow. It's, it's not actually nice at all. <laughs> wow. Oh, my god. Looks a little different, eh? It's beautiful. <laughs> it's huge. Look it how is, big isn't the backyard it? Come looks here. now, eh? Well, can I tell you something? The deck size is actually the same size as your other one. Really? It's not bigger at all. Like night and day. Yeah. This is in our backyard. So doesn't this work? You kind of like that? Look at how beautiful those you lights have a switch. are, guys. You have a switch on the wall on the inside to turn those lights on and off. I have outdoor lighting. Are, are they? What are they? I got to steal this. It doesn't studio. matter. I don't know what they are, but they're nice. Beautiful. Honest beautiful. to God. Everything is just perfect. We have a level deck now, a patio where patio. everything stays put and nobody rolls off the deck. And, and no one could fall off. Absolutely. And it's safe. Yeah. <laughs> and it, and looks, it looks fantastic. <laughs> With lights. They broke their backs. Mike Jr. doing this patio. Sherry, Adam, everyone else doing the back there. I mean, they work really hard. Tao and Lori. So you yes. got Lori. Look at this. Look at the tears. Isn't that great? That's fantastic. Just a little bit of lumber. No more soil erosion. No. That's that's the key. That fence is going to stay up now. Just gorgeous. What kind of maintenance am I looking at here for the the, the planting? Like water's a good one. I'll okay, tell you well, that, that much. One <laughs> that one I figured. That one I figured. We're going to start, start with water. <laughs> because we have a lot of mulch on top, we actually really reduce the weeds. And keep watering this grass. Yes. This is yes. going to take a lot of water. This is where you're going to spend your time. Until this grass takes, you've got to water it every day, OK? Slow down on the golf. Water your grass. I'll just, just golf back here. Right here. Yeah, I'll set up a, a little mini putt. Cutting green. Sure, sure. <laughs> How much money do you think we spent doing all this, all this, fixing the inside? How much? I, the leak? Well, I have a rough idea, but I'd say like sixty to seventy thousand. You're right We're on target. Money. That's a lot more than what, what we would have been able to to do. This is your first home, isn't it? <laughs> and it is. Yeah. So as a newlywed, it's my present to you. This is insane. It's fantastic, man. Thank you guys. I want to hug you guys. Okay. I don't want to. That's how we get paid. You know that, eh? One hundred percent blown surprised. away. Everything. The backyard is just incredible. The amount of stone that got put down, the fence, the lights, the new trees, grass. the retaining wall, the basement. I got a new floor. Did you say the fence? The fence. You said the lights? Yes. <laughs> Gorgeous. Blown away. Yeah. Holy cow. Like, That's seriously. Man. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> oh. We need a medic. Quick, get him over here. I have a feeling that will end up on the bloopers. They also Wow, green eyes. Are they yours? Yes, thank you. Damn. No wonder you like the guy. <laughs> Cheers. 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 To the guys. To the Good whole job. Crew. Cheers, boys. Cheers. 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 Ladies. Awesome job, crew.